Okay. I hope everyone had a good uh, conference so far. Uh, Global AI back together. One idea back together. And uh, I hope we're going to be going back uh, physical in future as well. Um, quickly moving forward, myself, Prabhat Nigam, three time Microsoft MVP, work for Golden Five. Uh, as a global CTO, and also run my LAX Suji Foundation, uh, which is a nonprofit for uh, similar kind of activities like the uh, user group and um, um, on site presents talking about new things which are coming. Uh, and, and all my contacts are there. Uh, you guys probably know I'm a universal you know, donor in the blood, and I share my birthday with Microsoft. I think I'm born to work in Microsoft. <laughs> That way, um, and I'm Microsoft certified professional since 1998, and trying to keep it maintained. Um, um, COVID-19 pandemic. I always start my communication with the COVID-19. It's making everyone aware. It's our responsibility to know and follow the precautions and look for the safer world in the future. Um, and, and anyone had any losses, we're very really sorry for about about the losses. Uh, Delta variant is on the go, so we have to keep safe. Still keep taking precautions, vaccinate yourself. Uh, in the US, we have third vaccination available. Uh, for many of us who have the critical disease, um, then they can take it. Um, and uh, we um, hope everyone stay safe, stay follow the follow, follow the procedures, and uh, hoping for a normal life soon. And what is coming next is, is good news for the you know, kids below 12 years of age, vaccinations on the way. I'm looking forward to vaccinate my kid as soon as it's available. Um, that's how we roll. If we have to die, die with the vaccine. Why don't want to die without vaccine? So at least you can say, we tried everything. Still, whatever the destiny is, we achieve the destiny. All right. Um, looking at the numbers, it's still increasing, but I think uh, it's a little bit calming down. A little bit, I see the downfall on the right hand side, if you see that. That's what I'm looking all this for forward to see. That's a kind of a good news. I hope it stays down and then no, don't go back. It has went, got, went down in January, then it went down um, April, May, and then it rise up again. Plus, this time we hope it doesn't rise up. Um, again, my session during the day time, obviously, I'm taking my time off and working, uh, presenting this. So definitely it's from my company to the sponsoring the session. Uh, we are a gold partner, we are CSP supplier, uh, AOSG partner, we are reseller for surface and service hubs as well. Located in the US, Canada, India, is the website, one link, and the Twitter, um, and hashtag. Any, any requirements in Microsoft, work, feel free to reach out. I am liking to put the things forward. I don't want to keep waiting for your you know, scan for the gift hampers. So I always like to put it things forward. So I'm putting it forward. If you have just joined, you scan it and uh, start working on your gift folders as well. I will present this again in doing the uh, slide. So don't miss it. Somebody joins later late. It's okay. Can not miss it. Agenda. IT today. Um, security concerns today. Um, what is remote working? Why remote working? Azure virtual desktop capabilities. Um, Azure virtual desktop features, Azure virtual desktop versus Azure um, Windows 365. And if you left for some time, we can go through the demo of Azure virtual desktop or Windows virtual desktop. Okay, what is remote working today? Um, or what, before I jump in, I think let's stop and prepare a separate slide for uh, IT today or security concerns because I think it's, it's very basic and we can talk over just at the agenda slide. So IT today is very hybrid. If you see, um, there's a new word coming, it's hybrid, and it has to be always um, there, but we never talk about it. Um, however, what is hybrid IT today is um, some of our staff is going, are going to office, some of our are working from home, or cafeteria, or somewhere else. Um, so that we can keep social distancing. In one way, we, now we are in a situation to figure this out, but it was always the thought that, hey, if 
this office has has no power no electricity has any disaster where is our second office many companies have that many companies don't but i think at least covid push to think about it. so what is your uh, how is the productivity keep continue how can you keep doing your business that's where we are today and i think from last one and a half year we were focused to build that so that we can continue working any moment any time 24 by 7 or even in a disaster many companies are also have offices in multiple countries like for example like my company we have offices in the us canada india so if us is down because of any reason we have the canada office to cover up or if both us canada regions are down then india can cover up as well so um anytime we see a something is not working we try to look Oh, is it work, not working from US only, or it's not working from Canada also, or India also? So probably that could be another approach for many IT companies, not just uh, working from home and um, office, but also there's another approach that working from home and office is available. Uh, many offices are adopting um, um, a culture of one person one day, second person second day. So maybe I'm coming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, my colleague who sits, sits next to me is coming um, at the, um, Tuesday and Thursday and uh, Saturday maybe or next Monday. So that's all. That's how we can still be uh, in the office, still be keeping social distancing, still be safe, and still be um, supporting uh, environment, supporting the work. Now this brings a huge security concern. Um, for anyone now, the world, the way the world is moving, the way the hacks are happening, the privacy, the uh, PCI data, the HIPAA, the compliance data, you know, everything is very compliant. Your uh, medical data is supposed to be with you. Suppose if you have a disease, your friend know, didn't know that, and maybe he knows now and he doesn't like you, and he starts keeping this test because probably he because of the unawareness of the disease, probably the disease is okay, you can sit with everybody and it uh, shouldn't happen. Or um, you don't want to disclose that you are uh, you have this kind of a disease uh, so that people should not feel, make you feel uh, you're weak or uh, they should not uh, give you kind of a sympathy or something. So that's why private data, you don't want that to be disclosed. That's why the security concern comes. Similarly, if you have a credit card data of a customer or your customer or your uh, organization, uh, you want to protect that. Same way other data are available too, which is be for US social security number, Canadian for Canada, Canadian tax number, for India it could be your PAN ID. So there could be more secure data. So that's where and the concern is how to secure that data, especially when the users are not working office and they go home, they use the laptop, they use the personal network, they use their Wi-Fi. There is very uh, concern um, approach there. You, If you have a Wi-Fi, will you not use for personal Facebook browsing? Will you not browse Twitter? Or if we have to have a, hey, one company network and one personal internet, that's a huge I mean, Do I want to invest in my electricity for that? or not that uh, and my my space it's the company on a paper my home space rental company is renting my home no it's not that but then that's where that's that's not very common uh, it could be some companies may say okay getting get your one room in the office we'll pay the rent for that we'll pay the wi-fi we'll set you up at home with multiple monitors yeah you could be a um, company's big big guy c level or higher may get that but normally normal workers may not get that all that so um thinking about security concern is still available how companies are dealing with how we handle those concerns that's where we gave a thought on remote work what is remote work how can we solve the security issue how can we solve this uh, id uh, concerns today so what is remote working Simply, you can say remote working is connecting services remotely, wherever you are, from flight, 
you're at the beach, you're at home, cafe, anywhere. So connecting services from another network, connecting services using VPN, connecting to cloud services, connecting from home, coffee, shop, beach, friends home, uh, and a party. Uh, doesn't mean that you have you're always working in the IT to the modem, right? You are connecting to your email, right? You are carrying your phone, you're in the party, you're checking the email. Oh, there's a, an outlet or something I have to work on. So the, at least you check, you access your remote working day. You access the email, you call your friend. So it's, it can be any, from anywhere. Um, working from another office. You think about it, if you are working from another office which does not have the servers which you are connecting to, that's just still a remote working. Um, working from office and servers are in data center. It's still remote working on those servers. You're not really connected physically next to the server. It's still remote working. While traveling or um, you finish a shift, a work weekend, you have a server outage. Working from home, that's normal way which we used to do. Right? Not, nothing new there, but now we, we are naming it as remote working. Yeah. Why remote working? We can work on the server. Everyone cannot work on the server. Server is only maximum two remote uh, desktop connections unless you create RDP or terminal server. Um, we can't be in the same office as the data center. Our servers are located in the data center. It's too cold. I never want to go inside. I've been there multiple times. And obviously, they do a lot of check, fingerprint check or face ID check before they unlock the door. So, um, don't want to go to the servers inside the, in the cold data center. Um, um, so servers are in the cloud, um, definitely not in the sky. That's what we call the hosted services. That's cloud. Uh, cloud is a new name, or I'm going to say, beautiful name of hosted services. Um, no servers, but cloud services. So we are serverless, right? Uh, maybe your company is serverless too. But we don't have any server, we don't have any server. We just use the services. Or um, your family is sick, or you are sick, you still need to work. Uh, for example, I never have a Monday off. So, <laughs> and many times I fall sick on Saturdays, try to recover on Monday, but may not be recovered. I still have to work on Mondays. Okay, um, but so I need to go to work. I cannot go uh, sick to the office. That's the whole point. Don't want to make other staff sick in the office. Um, Twenty-four seven support has an outage. So you work. You have a home repair or something else. Somebody's coming delivering this new sofa, right? Um, they will deliver in the new daytime, right? They are also daytime worker. They cannot come work after hours if the company has to deliver and come repair after hours, they have to also pay them over time, right? No one wants to do it after hours, that, that's the exact unless it's their own business, maybe yes. Uh, and last but not least, remote working is required due to the COVID lockdowns or COVID regulations, or we are trying to protect each other. That's where it's the remote working requirement. Now, Azure Virtual Desktop, solves this problem, that's how I uh, call it. Um, what are the features, let's go through that. BitLocker, encrypted disk. So by default, everything is encrypted in Microsoft Data Center, first of all. Microsoft Data Centers are very, very compliant. It complies with most of the compliances available. So BitLocker encrypts the disk for Azure Virtual Desktop. We can say a redirection to OneDrive, so there's no data on the um, Azure Virtual Desktop uh, VM. So it's on the OneDrive now. Device management policy we apply, so that patches can be applied, restrictions can be applied, multi-factor authentication can be applied. Oh, we apply Windows Defender to protect more from the different attacks, which may which may happen as it is Azure Virtual Desktop works on the HTTPS, so there's likely very less attacks may happen. Um, it's already a very secure app. Uh, block local computer access, so you don't not allow any USB connectivity. So local any local access which you want, you can block. Most likely, you will allow the headset so that you can use Microsoft Teams inside. 
but we like to block the other USB connectivities or any network storage you know, limit uh, not to connect with their um, AVD. Um, it's fast expandable. So any day you think, okay, my Azure desktop is over consumed, add another one. And the day you feel, oh, my Azure desktop is corrupt or something wrong, you can easily destroy and create a new one and go on from there. Questions, why would I destroy AVD? Any thoughts, please drop in the chat. Okay, answer is here, um, um, maybe not here, maybe in the next slide. I'll explain more. In Azure Virtual Desktop capabilities, it can go either personal or pool. Pool is same as RD web. Multiple users logged into one server, one Windows 10 machine, and using the resources and applications from that computer. However, personal is assigning a separate VM for a user that consumes more, um, uh, that's more efficient for uh, high level system admins, um, how pool works too. So depending on the organization's approach, maybe there's a very, very high um, consuming developer which who needs a personal um, AVD, you can use that too. Highly secure solution with Intune and VDI, centralized data management when you keep the data in the OneDrive and SharePoint, or you can also attach a storage if you need to be. I feel SharePoint is better than Azure storage, but I can. I was talking to a customer today morning uh, that is using Azure Data Lake because his uh, data size is uh, 200 terabytes compressed, uncompressed one terabyte. So um, that could be one scenario if you're using storage. Um, um, then Office for full suite can be configured and implemented and it will work as a single sign-on. You don't have to uh, log in again and again. 100% um, remote workforce ready. Uh, it's you can log in from anywhere. Don't have to worry about think, think logging from anywhere. Just need internet, just and just log into your office from anywhere. Now, integrated with all other single sign-on solutions, BitLocker, DLP, DLP Data Loss Prevention, Azure Information Protection, Azure Information Protection with the uh, double key encryption we have configured and tested as well. That works too. Um, so again, that's just a consumption of the protection. Uh, which you can configure with MFA, uh, free from ransomware or theft, uh, because the data is not there. It's just you're saving the data in the one drive and SharePoint. Right? Um, That's why I was talking about Microsoft tag your access with double key encryption. Um, we can also configure MSIX packaging option. That's a big boom for MSIX packaging option. I'll talk about it shortly in the next slide. Uh, then phone system, referencing uh, domestic calling plan or international calling plan, anything you want, just like a full laptop, but more secure laptop can be stolen. Somebody can steal your hard disk. Somebody can um, attack a virus, but most likely on AVD, uh -uh, that's not possible. And uh, biggest point is it can support multi tenant integration. So which means your Office 5 can be in one tenant and Azure, AD, Azure Virtual Desktop can be in another tenant. Doesn't have to be in the same uh, tenant. All right. Question again Why Microsoft changed WVD to AVD? I think the answer we will find in the next slide. Okay, this slide comes again. I just, like I said, I'm going to be. Um, Operating that slide again and again. We definitely wanted to win. Uh, so keep scanning, keep winning. All right. Um, Azure Virtual Desktop versus Windows 365. This is the answer. Why Microsoft changed the name from Windows Virtual Desktop to Azure Virtual Desktop 
because they were launching Windows 365. That sounds too close if you say Windows Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. Then you'll ask, what is the difference? It's actually as a virtual desktop. Windows 65 is also a virtual desktop. So, so to differentiate that, one is Azure Virtual Desktop, other is Windows 65. That's how Microsoft come up with it. Changing change of name for Windows Virtual Desktop. How critical it is for small, small details of changing the uh, name is important for uh, a product to grow. That's what we uh, have to see as well. However, here's the comparison between one to one in the thing, right? Um, so Windows Virtual Desktop uh, or Azure Virtual Desktop is more is more, I believe, um, is for um, industrial enterprise users. Uh, most likely, they will be using uh, personalized and multi-session desktops, um, whereas Windows 5 is only personalized desktops for maybe small business owners who just have one or two computers and they feel safe if they uh, use Windows 5 uh, rather than using their personal laptop. So they use Windows 65 login and log out, and the data and work is done. Um, whereas um, on their laptop, they can play movies, song, or like whatnot, gaming, anything. Okay. Uh, then other comparison is uh, remote app streaming is totally available in Azure Virtual Desktop. MSIX packaging is available there. Those things are not available in Windows 65. It's just personalized apps you install global very close to uh, personalized Azure Virtual Desktop. But it's still, you have more control uh, on Azure Virtual Desktop in compared to Windows 65. Um, it is fully managed, fully controlled, uh, more options it gives to use your connector uh, using the separates or VMware integration is available um, on uh, Azure Virtual Desktop. And, uh, flexible consumption based price, um, whereas Windows 65 is uh, less customizable, limited management, no MSIX packaging, or um, all those sort of configurations are missing. It's just a direct uh, one PC, use just like a laptop, install everything, and use it every day. Okay, question what is that? MSX packaging. So talking about question, this is my third question. I don't know if you answered with my first or second, but I think second one I have already answered. But my first one was, um, let's go back a bit. Why would I destroy AVD? If you're not answered, the answer is simple. That um, if it is corrupt uh, or it got infected with some kind of a why some apps are not working uh, or something is not working as on, on the AVD, then only I will destroy AVD. But most likely, the chances are very rare that I will destroy it. I will not destroy it. Most likely, we are not configuring everything in the AVD, so it will not, will not be destroyed. Okay, so what is MSX packaging? Here's my, uh, here's the answer. If you don't know what is MSIX packaging, it's very important to show them more advanced -ness, it's, it brings more advancedness to our system. Um, what it does is these uh, points to consider. It allows software deployment in extended disk. So you can, you can attach a disk with MSX packages and install on it. It just makes you feel like you have installed the software on D drive, not, not on the C drive. This is your D drive with all the softwares in it. Um, it allows different software for different teams. Imagine I'm attaching one MSX package for uh, 10 users, and for another 10 users, I'm attaching different MSX package because those other 10 users don't need those other softwares, and those could be over consuming or maybe not required. It's a, it's a restriction. For example, um, 
finance team, we need those different finance and accounting software tools, whereas human resource team don't need those. So I will set up a different software tools for different team. That's that's possible through my science packaging. Um, another good advantage I see is once you created one, uh, you can use it for unlimited time and forever. Right? It's just not that one time you create and uh, you have to recreate it again and again. You may have to update the patches, that's a one more thing. But that you can do offline and then bring up the uh, files and just push it on the back and you know, just replace the disk maybe. That's easier option than um, shutting down your VM and updating the patch and the VM is not coming back up or something of that, that sort happens normally. So that's, you avoid that. Uninterrupted update deployment is that's that's what we're doing for um, third party software, which we're deploying under the MSX packaging. Then secure management. You can keep it anywhere safe, that PhD, don't worry about the software so being attacked or anything. So that's way secure than normal packaging, normal installations. Now, we're talking about um, supported OS and licenses. Um, this is colored in different colors because they tie to each other. Let me just move this. Move this one a bit up. Okay, so they are different, in, uh, different. They color differently, uh, matching to each other on the left and right, because that's what you need. So if you have a uh, supported operating system on the left, but then on the right it shows what license it supports and works with. Um, Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session or Windows 10 Enterprise. Um, so you know, multi-session is needed for personalized. Uh, sorry, might as well need for pool, but uh, for personalized, you need Windows 10. Enterprise don't have to do multi session. And which license covers those are on the right hand side that Microsoft 365, E3, E5, A3, L5, F3, Business Premium, and Windows E3, E5, A3, A5 will cover that. Similarly, Windows 7 doesn't have a multi session version. So only Windows 7 Enterprise will work. That is only for personalized version, not for whole version. You cannot use it for whole version. And that requires the same license as above, but then um, it's operating system difference and it's only for personalized uh, uh, AVD. Then move to the servers. Windows 2012 are two words, 2016 words, and 2019 words. But then you have to use a different license, which is for RDC Cal, the software showings, not normal on premises RDC Cal ones. So that's a different. Those these above licenses cannot be used with uh, 2012 or um, Windows, Windows 10 cannot use these RDC Cal's. Very important for deployment purposes and obviously the cost the cost calculation purposes. Okay, now I'm talking about how do you ask what tool you need to sub support your remote desktop clients. It works with Windows desktop um, app. Um, we have Windows desktop app, um, web. You can use a web browser. I don't recommend to use that, but you can use it. Um, Mac OS iOS, Android, uh, Microsoft Store client. And the little bit different when we work in different um, operating systems. So uh, for Apple, uh, it needs you to add this URL in, your, in this remote desktop app. So you will see this icon, that's your remote desktop client app, which you need to access Azure Virtual Desktop. And in Windows devices, it uses user principal name to log in and the password. And whereas in Apple devices, you have to add the feed first 
and then um, that will add a subscription, then you have to log in. Whereas Windows devices are much simpler, use user principal name and you can log in. Um, we're going to take a look at the um, demo in a little bit. Thank you. I think that's the right time. But yeah, just want to talk about a little bit of AI, how AI can help, and how AI can uh, are helping the world. It's just not one thing, it's not the IT, just not Microsoft, it's overall. Um, artificial intelligence is enhancing the world's requirement or world's growing requirement in so many ways. You don't even realize what artificial intelligence is doing uh, to you or to your day-to-day your -day life. Um, every time there's a pop-up or your favorite brand shows up when you search faster, that's AI. Artificial intelligence knows of your previous search and gives you the result. Uh, I'm sure you might have attended a few more sessions and learn about AI more. But I just want to uh, say, yeah, just think whenever you go to any shop or mall or um, use any website or, um, you know, where there's a uh, artificial intelligence being used to see how they're um, projecting what will be your likings. It's a winter, so artificial intelligence is there that tells that, okay, there's a winter now, let's bring the... Uh, winter clothing in front or uh, something like that uh, depending on the artificial intelligence is obviously working on the data past data such as a calculating oh in the morning hours more men comes to the shop um, women comes in the afternoon hours so during those hours it can uh, suggest that okay bring the men's items up front and then uh, bring the women's item up front so based on data it works but then how beautifully world is going around that is important okay um here's my icon you see i can just go there and see what is there oh i have a customer ID. i don't want to use that so i'm gonna unsubscribe, unsubscribe that and it quickly unsubscribes and i click on subscribe again i have an option to use the same url however Subscribe link works very well, and I like to subscribe my uh, company's DVD. And it picked my um, authentication and, um, from previous configurations, and it allowed me to uh, subscribe the DVD. This is the biggest question. Do I remember that? Let's see. Uh, okay. So this is the problem of uh, I think everyone that uh, we don't know what is the password now. So what can I do? I can call my system and leave it. I ask them, hey, can you reset my address password and sync it? And I can get going. Or I can, I can go to the password reset um, link and reset my password. Um, at least that's what, that what I can try. Microsoft I can remember the link, right? It's simple. Search and look for the link. Or look for this icon. How can I go to this icon? Azure.com and I know my ID, so I can say PU, PU, the one, old user, PU, uh, at, um, the 
www.bitcoin.com That's a public password. And Woohoo! So I did not conf configure my options there. So I cannot reset my password. I have to contact my system administrator. Okay. So this is, you know, this is a challenge or this is where the world is moving towards. That's what I've seen a lot and it happens all the time. Um, and it happened to me also. It, I'm not a different person. I have um, hundreds of ID logins. I don't. I don't, I don't realize that I did not set up the um, the recovery details for these uh, for this ID. Okay, so uh, what can I do? I, I have no other choice than either recover my previous password and log in using that, or I have to call my system administrator. Or if I'm the admin, then I can log in as the admin. Let me try my other ID. But I like to unsubscribe and resubscribe. Hi, Prabhat. By the time you are resetting it, let's have a talk about the Windows VM. So, so how, how, what are you trying to access? Like, what kind of a subscription is this and um, how people can access it? Um, I've got talk about Windows is fine. Yeah, Windows 65 comes with a separate licensing uh, options. So that has to be separately discussed, and I'm not covering that today. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but I was covering this, so I'm just going to go back to the, uh, get my password and show you. But however, overall, the experience, you will see the same if you access from um, um, your phone or your iPhone or your iOS device or Windows desktop or Mac OS or Android. I've shared this demo multiple times in the past. So if, if today this demo doesn't work, it doesn't mean that um, there's a demo available. Um, always in my YouTube channel, you'll find that available and access that too in the past um, um, sessions. But I'm trying to get this one working. If it works, that's, that's great. But if not, then I'll spend one more minute and then call it off. Sure, Robert.
Okay, uh, the password to change, but synchronization will take time. So, anyways, uh, moving on, I guess that demo another day, maybe. Um, so, yeah, if you are interested in uh, Azure Virtual Desktop, that's a company's options available. Um, go for it. If you're 50 users or more, it's much easier, cheaper, $25 per user per month. Uh, and uh, being part of here, we are offering a discount for any office by licensing um, anywhere you are in the US, Canada, India, we can offer you the licensing and offer you 10 percent discount. Um, okay, this is for office by tenants only, but your tenant has to be offered in the US only. And the discount code is mentioned there. So email to our sales, sales team at sales at uh, goldenfire.net with this discount code and we'll set it up. And um, you want to listen more from me, or you can connect uh, to different channels. Um, however, I'm reducing my uh, multiple you know, face, Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. So in order to do that, we are focusing on Microsoft Technology Forum and Facebook. Just connect there. Um, we have um, 8,000 members there. And then LinkedIn group is also there. Um, and you can also check out our YouTube channel. And if you are in California, California or Los Angeles, um, we'll be starting LA EXUG meetings soon. As soon as we have mandate to go out and everything opens up, so we'll see you there. Any questions? I can add this now. And thank you everyone for uh, being part of Global uh, AI. I hope that session was a little bit. Um, if not everything but it is a little bit useful for you and you will take advantage of it. <laughs>